Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Abby if you're new here. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the plants that I have that have done really well in low light. So I get asked this question quite a lot actually. I get asked what plants I have um, do the best in low light, but also the ones that I can recommend for people that aren't too sure on the light conditions a plant needs. So a lot of people worry about having a plant and not be able to give it enough light for one and also not really understanding if the light they're giving them is enough so they want plants that they know can handle the lower light so um i'm going to talk about the plants that i have in my collection that i i have found have been like not fussy with me at all some of them have had tremendously low light um, and then some of them have had both so they've had better light and then they've gone to a area of my flat where it's been really low light so i know that they can handle both and before we get into the video don't forget to like this video if you enjoy it at the end or thumbs down if you don't and don't forget to subscribe so just another disclaimer i really do want to say these plants can tolerate low light from my experience but all plants need light and they like light so when i say low light i don't mean darkness i mean a, a low a low lit area where you it's noticeably low lit i don't know how to describe that some people do say um i think it was um plant arena who said if you can comfortably read a book then that is a low light um, or low lit area for a plant um but i will mention the plants that i have in this collection that are I'd say in a lower lit area than even that. So we'll just get into it and I'll just explain as we go along. So the first one is this Peperomia string of turtles. This this is in an area in my flat where it's not getting it's not getting great light. It's it's kind of behind the TV, like around the corner, if that makes any sense. The way the, the light comes into my flat, it, it doesn't ever touch it. So it really is in a, like a, a dark spot. I don't know how else to explain it other than that, but it's in a low lit area. Um, but this has been, this has been excellent for me. I have had this now for two and a half months and it has grown a lot. So if you have just watched my new um, plant tour, you'll see in there, I did a comparison to what it was uh, when I first got it. And I'll, I'll show this on the screen as well. So I'll put the image here. This is what it used to look like when I got it. So all of this like growth here is new. It's obviously, it's obviously in a low lit area and it can still manage to push out that new growth. So I think for, for one, that is amazing. And two, it's a relatively easy plant. I've done nothing other than when it gets like, uh, like brown crispy bits, which you can kind of see like here, like literally just dead little bits. Then I just pull them off. There's hardly any of them. And I water it when it kind of gets dry and I find this really really easy um so yeah this is a surprising one to me um just because I haven't had this plant before but it's been it's been doing brilliantly in low light so this next one is one that has literally never been like it's never had the opportunity to even have light it's always been in the low lit area of my flat and I have had this plant for I, I would honestly years and like years so I don't even remember the number just a long long time and um, this is a cutting of it because I can't bring the whole plant to you and um, this is a Hartley philodendron so I have had the mother plant to this um for so long in such a dark area of my flat which is actually on the other side of the shelf which I now have grow lights for so I have only had grow lights there um it's literally been days. So by the time this comes out, it would have been like a week or so. I literally haven't had grow lights there for long. It's the first time I've ever, ever had grow lights there. So this plant has been doing absolutely amazingly in such a low lit area for so long. So it is really easy. Um, it's a bit sparse at the moment because I honestly took so many cuttings from it. I have, I've got so many jars of this around because i like to make new plants and and everything but um again i will show pictures of how big this plant got I, whether i put where i put on the screen i don't know but i'll show uh, like a picture of how big it was it was trailing like it grew from being i cut it back at the end of I, i'd say the end of summer 2019 
and then all of that growth came out within a year but during that time i was cutting it back still so it grows really quickly and it has only been subjected to a lola area so i can confidently say this plant is really chilled when it comes to the amount of light you give it so another plant that i have kept um, in both high light and low light and it's done just as good in low light i've probably seen more um, growth of it in low light is this hoya australis so i got um i got this and already had these like tendrils it already was like pushing this out um but it pushed out all of these new leaves with well, these two in high light uh, lit area and then these and then like this new growth up here in a low lit area so that that to me is is amazing that it can grow that well um, I did lose a leaf or two on it um, and it turned out that it just, it did have thrips. So I, I have had issues with this one, but other than that, it's been, it's been fine. Hasn't shown any signs of yellowing or anything. It's been, it's been absolutely fine. I, yeah, I keep this at the top of my shelf in my kitchen on the other side of the room to the window and it's been great for me. So yeah, there's that one as well. So the next plant that I think really thrives in high light, but also does just as well in low light is the Syngonium. So this is a white butterfly. Um, it's a really full plant, as you can see. I do notice that when it's closer to the light source, it's um, the leaves are a lot um, lighter. And then this is kind of like new growth from being in a dark kind of area. You see how they are smaller um, and they're darker. So there is definitely a difference with what you'll get out of it, depending on how much light you're giving it, but it does um, do just fine in low light areas. So this one, again, was in my kitchen, no natural light near it, like nothing at all. Really like off, like the corner where I'd say it was the darkest in my kitchen, it was like, it was there for months. And then before that, it was in the window. So it's had, it's been exposed to different kind of like lighting conditions and it's been fine. Um, and yeah, it's a really, really easy plant. So I think that obviously kind of um, transfers into how it kind of like manages in different lighting. So another plant that I think is really, really good in low light areas and high light areas is the um, golden pothos. So this is a water propagation. Um, these have been in there for months. They, honestly, I just change the water out and I leave them in there. Um, they're, they're root, they root so easily. That's just another thing anyway. Um, but my mother plant of this um, is currently in the shower, um, but it would normally sit, can you see here? It would normally hang down here. Um, and like I said, that has only recently just got a grow light, re like very recently. Before that, there was no natural light there. And it was, it was the plant in my flat that was the, it gave me the least bother. It has no drainage hole in the big pot it's in. So I literally, I don't even stick my finger in when I water it. I kind of just know my leaves on that plant now and I just give it a water and I'm not careful to make sure it drains out, which I do with every other plant, but that plant is so easy. And it's in a low lit condition. So now it's got, um, once it's out of the shower and back in situ, <laughs> now it's got a grow light. I would expect to see the variegation um, coming through. So you're, you're like, you can see from here, like these are relatively like green, like predominantly green leaves. And um, usually when you give a light that has the ability to be variegated more light, you'll, you'll get some more variegations through it. So this is called the golden pothos because it obviously has that nice like golden kind of like creamy variegation through it. And um, this plant does sometimes get like bright white variegation, which is lovely. Um, and it's only ever so subtle and only sometimes because normally, like I say, it is more of a creamy variegation, but that is one that honestly, the easiest plant in the world, I would say would be this one, the Hartley philodendron, and also another plant I'm about to show you as well. So, so the next plant I'm going to show you that is absolutely fine in low lit areas, as you can probably see, is the snake plant. Um, I, <laughs> all of these plants are in the same position. They're all in my kitchen or in my bedroom where it was really dark. This has caused me no problems whatsoever. I have a huge um, like ver version of this in the bedroom. And if you, again, if you watch my houseplant tour, you would have seen it. It's literally 
<laughs> it's on the opposite. It's in my quarantine station um, if I ever have problematic plants, but I have the grow light there for when plants are there, but I don't keep a grow light on for my snake plant because it doesn't need it. It's fine. Um, it's caused me no problems whatsoever. And that snake plant in the bedroom has shown me lots of new growth. This one hasn't. Um, some some just are slower growers than others. I mean, it's just the way it is. But the other one has shown me substantial growth. So yeah, absolutely fine in lowland areas and does fine near the window and in good um, light sources as well. And then last but not least, and I'm sure this is on everyone's low lit loving plant list, is the ZZ plant. So this is my ZZ plant. I literally have nothing to say about it other than it's just super chill. It's fine. It doesn't cause me any problems. Um, I have got yellow tips on the ends and it's because I, I'm an overwaterer. I'm an overlover. And yeah, I definitely gave this one too much water at some point, but that was in the past and since it's been absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, I, I had this plant and this is the only plant I've ever put in this position but I've got a corridor between my two bedrooms and my main living room in this room. That, that corridor has no, no windows or anything. So it's naturally really, really dark. Um, this lived there for months and I just kind of wanted to see how it would do in a, a room with literally no windows. And it was absolutely fine, but I moved it because I wanted to see how good it could do. So the story behind this is my mother-in-law has a huge ZZ plant and it's next to, it's directly next to a window and um, back um, in the family home. And it's, it's huge, it's massive. So once I went over and visited her and then saw how big that plant was getting of hers, I was like, I want to put mine near a window to see if it will grow that big. <laughs> so it's literally lived um, next to the window since. Um, but yeah, it, it can completely tolerate low light. So it's another one that's a super easy plant if you're looking for something to go in that kind of like area of your home. But like I do want to just reiterate and say again, all of these plants can tolerate low light, but they do and will do better in good, bright, non-indirect light sources. So it's just something to bear in mind. But if you absolutely don't have that kind of lighting environment and you want a plant in that particular area, then I would be comfortable, well, very comfortable suggesting any of these. The one that I was surprised at um, until I got it myself was this um, string of turtles. Um, but it might be, again, this is probably the only one that I would say it could be different for other people, but I have had no problems with this and it's in a really, really low lit area. Everything else I've had for years whether it be that plant or different um kind of like version of that plant i've had for years so i can comfortably say that they do fine in really dark lola areas but if you want the best and the most out of it definitely go for bright and non-indirect light with these plants so thank you for watching i hope you found this helpful do you have any plants on your list that you think do really well in low light and i haven't mentioned if so write them down below to help us all out and um, if you have any questions again just write them down below and i'll um, best answer them where i can if i can't then someone else would be able to help and i will see you in the next one bye